you say to yourself, what the hell was that all about? Well, what that was is two brand new ugly stick tiger rods. What they would call the eight foot downrigger rod. <clears throat> I'm not necessarily using them at this point for any downrigger fishing. But what they are going to be is my new float rig rods. <clears throat> and I am taking these um, Daiwa Ryogas 7.4 to 1 with the big power handle, 30 pound Hercules uh, braid on them, and I'm putting them on these tiger rods. And no, the tiger does not have a trigger. No, it doesn't have a lot. It's two piece, and what you just saw me do is I glued the two pieces together. I've got two others that I use for top water. Gotta remember, I had to find out my little groove is in my boat that I can, you know, only really do any casting from the back of the boat. So, and I'm usually at anchor. And I found out real fast that an eight foot rod gives me a lot more slinging room to really make some long bomb casts with a topwater plug. Be it offshore, inshore, near shore, whatever. So what I did is I, as I normally would do with a two piece rod, is I glued it together with some non-foaming clear Gorilla Glue. And the reason I'm going to this is because I like an eight footer when I have customers on the boat because what I can do is I can sling mine out to the side very easy and hold that eight foot rod out of their way because they're running straight off the boat drifting in the tide. So, what I figured I would do while I'm rigging this up is these are going to be personal slash whatever kind of rods. And I'm going to reiterate how I rig up a float rig. Okay. And this is just me. A lot of people do it different, but I do it my way because my way is the same way I set up my customers when they're doing it. All right. So I use these salmon floats. Everybody wants to know where you get those salmon floats, Dave. I mean, you can use any float. You don't have to use these. But these are, you, you know, open cell foam with a covering plastic coating on them or something. So the first thing you're going to want to do is coming off of your rod tip. The first thing you want to do is look at the end of your braid and make sure it's not all frazzled. By cutting it, I use this um, cutter that's been on my Tools of the Trade page with ceramic blades inside. It cuts, if I do it correctly, it cuts a very nice clean end. All right, now what I got here, this is going to be, I might even have to get my own reading glasses out. All right, because this is mighty small. I'm using that size bead, if you can see it. Oh, little tiny bead, doesn't matter what color, but a very small little bead. I'm going to take this, I put it on the, put my braid through it, let it run up. Okay. Then I take my float, and now I 
thread thread the braid through my float. Alright, okay, got that through. So what you end up having now I'm going to where is it? Did I lose it? No. And I've got another bead that's exactly the same size. Except this one's red. You can see that one. So what you have is a bead on the top of your float and the bottom of your float. Thread that little baby on there. Alright. Now, that is a two ounce float calibrated. That a two ounces will pull that down to the color line. That's exactly what this does. That float is so buoyant that two ounces go. And what that does is it achieves stability. If you had on a two ounce float, if you only put, let's say, a one ounce or a three quarter or a half, then it's not going to pull it down. And here's what you're going to get. You're going to get it bobbing all over the place with water wave action and things like that. When this is a calibrated float, three quarters of the float goes underwater to keep it nice and stable. But then again, you better have good eyes to be able to see that 100 paces behind the boat. Okay, so now it's bead, float, bead. Then, I do a thing, and I just had a guy over at my house picking up one of the saltest reels that he bought that I have for sale. The 20HC saltest. Only got three left. And uh, what I do now is I take about a foot or 18 inches and I make a loop and you can even leave the tag in hanging because there's a rhyme there's uh, there's a reason to this rhyme okay I take it now this is just me I'm just doing what I do and I'm showing you okay so I got a loop here got a loop and I got my, just some extra. What I'm going to do with that whole thing is I'm going to bring it on back, the, the, the single piece, then the loop. And I'm just going to pinch it both and pull it all tight and then make another loop. Now, you can just take all of this and run it through there a bunch of times. Or you could use this carpet hook. The carpet hook just makes it quick and dirty, okay? I take the carpet hook, I go in the loop a whole bunch of times, I spin it, I open the eye, I hook what's left over here, and I pull it through. And what that does in turn now is when I pull this tight, it makes a big old jumbo knot. It doesn't have to be any particular. You're making just a jumbo knot. Alright? And then I'm going to cut all the tags off. Okay? And it makes just a big old jumbo knot. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It's a jumbo knot. And why is it a jumbo knot? Because now the bead comes down and hits on top of it. Nice and easy, just like that. I know that was quick for you. So now I have a loop. And there's two things you can do. Easiest thing to do is just tie a knot. Okay. Now you can pull it tight. I like to pull against 
because I do not want one pieces of this loop being loose and one being tight. I want to get them the same. So most of your trout leads, if they've got, I got a little piece of braid still stuck on there. It doesn't really matter. This is the nicest trout lead you can get. It's a torpedo shape with a barrel swivel here and a barrel swivel here. I use the, the thick end up top. That's just what I do. And I'm just going to now tie the same knot that I've been tying since I was 10 years old and use the double loop there that I just made and tie on the sinker. I'm going to pull that knot tight. Boom. Then I'm going to cut that little tag end off. Okay. My nice little braid cutter that never ever never ever dulls because it's ceramic. So what do you got now? You got your trout lead you got a double line. Sometimes it's very hard to separate that thin braid. But you got a double line. You got a big old gangly knot. It doesn't matter as long as it's a knot. Big enough that that bead can come banging down on top of. I got my float. Then I got another bead. And now you're going to say to yourself, but Dave, you forgot to put on your damn stop or not because that's how this all works right when you're float rig fishing it's controlled depth fishing you set your depth you put on there about a 20 pound leader maybe 15 some people are even doing high dollar fluorocarbon okay and you come off of your swivel here about 24 to 30 inches and use a little tiny hook because you're putting on a live shrimp. Okay? And everything south of that swivel at the bottom here is 100% sacrificial. And the reason you want it that way is if this gets stuck or you get hung in the bottom with your hook, you want to be able to pop it, break it, tie on a new one, and be back in the game that quick. But if you get your sinker stuck for whatever reason I call this and this is what I was just talking to the guy that came over to my house and picked up his reel I call this the insurance policy because if you happen to break one of these you got one to still bring a fish to the boat and at the same time I loop this around my rod butt to hold this whole contraption tight to the reel down near the business end when I'm ripping up and down the St. John's River and I don't have all this stuff flapping at an eight foot rod tip. Okay. So then there's the next thing. Stopper knots. A lot of people don't have don't know how to make a stopper knot. What they do is they go and they buy those little tubes. Okay, they buy that little tube and then they put it on here or they forget to put it on here and gotta redo it. You don't have to do that. You can take 20 pound mono, cut yourself a foot or so, and I'm just going to do it. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this very well. I don't know how to back this up against anything. But what I do is I take my 20 pound mono, I go around my braid, and I put them both together and they should cross down here. So now you have a loop and your braid going up behind it. And all I do is I take one end and go through one half of the loop. Go through one half of the loop. This isn't how I'd be holding it most of the time. And I do it about five times, 
go through, go through again, and let's say one more for good measure, about five times. So now you've got a loop with one side of it over here with your tag end on this side. I'm still holding it down here. You got it spun around and you're going to just pull it tight, wet it of course, give it a kiss, and I go, bam, pull it tight, and now that's my stopper knot that can slide up and down on my braid. And the 20 pound works good because as you move it up and down your braid, kind of heats the mono up just a little bit, just a little bit at a time, every time you move it, and it kind of starts really locking on there. But I've got all these tag ends from my stopper knot now. I'm going to cut them and leave them where I can take this, if it does loosen up, and i got enough to grab with my fingers and tighten it up. And there's our stopper knot that'll go right through your guides, right through your level wind on your reel, and right onto your spool. Because you could have this set 20 feet down your line for your float to go up and hit and be fishing 20 feet deep. That's the magic of the float rig. Anchored up, enjoying the day, drifting a live bait in the current behind the boat over structure. I do have a A to Z video. A to Z. I'll put a link in it in the video description. I might even take it and put it in the card, which is the little circle with the with the exclamation point in it, or the end card, which shows up at the very end of this video. And it's called the Float Rig Show. And I go through all of this A to Z with a young kid who looked like he wasn't paying attention half the time. He agreed to do it, but then he didn't look like he was paying attention half the time. So don't pay attention to him. Pay attention to me teaching you. That's my new float rig setup. It's going to be, it's a little long, and this room is really, this room's like a walk-in closet in a big house. Okay, so I can't really spread this out and show you, but I got my high-speed Daiwa Ryoga on just a plain tiger rod. Everybody distinguishes, if you're like me, what kind of rod it is by what the butt looks like. Let me do this very carefully. There's the tiger rod, just a plain old tiger. The downrigger rod, that they call the downrigger rod, has a short foam foregrip. Plain old reel seat. Screws in from the bottom instead of the top, like a trolling reel seat. No trigger. And the nice thing about it, gimbal rubber cap at the bottom. And this is the same as a medium light that I use for bottom fishing. This is the exact same rod, a foot longer. So this rod is a 1 to 4 ounce, 8 foot medium light, 12 to 30 pound test. If you want to actually know the, the real uh, model number, it's a USTD, ugly stick, tiger, Downrigger DR 1230C, 1230C meaning casting, 802, 8 foot 2 piece. That's how that model number works. All right, so it's just something I want to do. Old school is longer rods. Most of the time, I don't want to give my customers really long rods because they kind of I mean, you got to remember, I'm not, I got kids, I got little women. Um, I don't want to give them something that's too long. So I got them on my seven foot striper rods, but I want this for myself. 
I also use this exact same rod for throwing top water plugs. So there you go. There's a little addition to the float rig arsenal. At the same time, the top water plugging arsenal. And um, got them from Bass Pro. <sighs> you know, what I think Ugly Stick is doing is they're trying to supply all of their dis major distributors. Um, I know they don't have anything at UglyStick.com. Yes, they have a website, UglyStick.com. And everything it says out of stock. So even a cheapskate like me had to pay basically MSRP for it. Okay? And I hate that. Hate MSRP. So that's rigging up a two ounce float with a two ounce, what we around here call a trout lead. That's the newest addition to the arsenal. And I hope to get out there and give her a shot real soon. So I'll see you on the next one.